Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew. Thank you, Elder Morton. This man is a preacher's friend. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for looking in the back, and there's a certain face that I was hoping to see in this conference, and that's my pastor. Love you, Elder Booker. Amen. And I hope I don't disappoint you, Elder. He's put up with some stuff from me. Amen. He was telling Joel when Joel was just a young man about me and some guys and fist fighting and being idiots. Joel looked and said, Dad, did they have the Holy Ghost? He said, well, son, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, here we are. Hey, he's a good God. I said, he's a good God. Amen. He brought us out of darkness and he put us in his marvelous light. Amen. Thank God for the grace and the mercy of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written. Aren't you glad for the written word? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Help me pray, would you? God, we love you. Amen. We thank you, God, for the beautiful word that we've heard. We thank you for the spirit that's in this place. And God, I want the mind and the will of the Holy Ghost. I want and need the help of your spirit, God. Help us today. Help us today, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You may be, you may be seated. Amen. Most of us obviously have heard this setting of Scripture when we're talking about the temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He'd been in the wilderness for 40 days. He had been fasting. And the Bible said he was being tempted of the devil. Amen. And there, this was the second temptation. And, and I don't really want to deal with the others uh, there's a certain point I want to make here, but, but he was, the Bible says, in all points, tempted like as we are yet without sin. Amen. And so the devil is coming to him. He's been 40 days, 40 nights fasting. Uh, he's hungry. He tempts him with bread. He refuses that and, and overcomes him by the word of God. And now he is... Uh, bringing him to him uh, yet another temptation, and that is he takes him to this place called the pinnacle of the temple. Amen. This pinnacle, amen, was, was according to history, a platform that, that was on the corner of the temple wall, amen, and the, the priest and it would go there, and there was a stairway that they could climb up to this platform, it was, it was high on the, on the corner of the wall, it was several hundred feet off of the ground, and the priest would go to this pinnacle of the temple, and in the corner or in a, a, a niche in the wall, there was a, a place called the place of trumpeting, and these priests would go up there, and for, for the feasts and for the, the, the worship, they would sound the trumpet, amen, and they, would, and they would let the people know it was time to do certain things, amen. I thank God that there are priests that are standing on the pinnacle of the temple today. I appreciate Brother Garza, amen, blowing a trumpet in Zion and letting us know 
amen, that we need God, amen. You better thank God that God's put a man on the wall. You better thank God that God's put a trumpeter, amen, blowing the trumpet, sounding the alarm. Hey, we need to hear what the word of God says. Amen. And so if it was any place that the devil wanted to bring Jesus to destruction, it was this place called the pinnacle of the temple. He wanted, he did not want his message to go forth. Amen. He, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Amen. And so he was there and he was not just the preacher of the message. He was the message. Amen. And the devil didn't want this message. Amen. I'm going to tell you, the devil hates this message. He hates Acts 2.38. He hates, amen, one God. Amen. He hates what we preach. He hates holiness and he hates righteousness. And so it was his attempt to stop the gospel, the message, the word of God. Amen. And so he takes him to this high place and he offers him, if you want to uh, say, a shortcut Calvary. Jesus, if you'll do a great notable miracle and cast yourself down and they see these angels catch you, man, you'll, you'll impress these folks. And you know, you really don't have to go to Calvary. You really don't have to do all that suffering. There really doesn't need to be all that bleeding and dying. Hey man, you know, you really don't have to pay that price. You know, there's really an easier way to have revival. There's really an easier way to get something from God. Hey Amen. It's just, you know, you don't have to go through all that. I'm just going to tell you, hey Amen. there is no other way to get to God except through sacrifice and through giving yourself to God and the brother Garza preached through prayer amen and, and the devil knew it and he knew amen once Jesus goes through with this amen I'm finished the devil is afraid of a church that knows how to pray and sacrifice to God he's scared to death of you as a saint of God Amen. Praise the Lord. They found a, a stone block that was actually excavated from this pinnacle of the temple and this temple wall. And it said, to the place of trumpeting was inscribed on it. Amen. I thank God for men that stand in the place of trumpeting. Amen. I thank God that they have brought me thus far. Hallelujah. Thank God for your, your man of God. You better thank God for your man of God. Amen. And so as Jesus stood on that pinnacle of the temple there with the devil himself and he began to to talk to him and he began to tell him cast yourself down amen and he offered him if you would please and this is really the crux and title of my message he offered him a safety net now, it was a lie it was false it wasn't true but he he threw it out there he said well you know if you want to talk about scripture he said man I, I know the Bible pretty well he said uh, uh, you know Psalm says uh, he, he will give his angels uh, watch concerning thee and, and lest at any time now he did add a little few words in there you know at any time was not really in the original, amen. And so uh, uh, he, he, he was kind of putting it out there, you know, that God will just, God will just cover you no matter what you do, amen. He offered him a falsehood. He offered him a lie. I'm going to tell you something. Devil has never changed his tactics. You think if he didn't try that with Jesus Christ, he won't try it with you, amen. You get out from under the protection of the authority of God, friend. You are in trouble with God, amen. And he tried to fool Jesus, and obviously he could not do it. And obviously wasn't going to happen, amen, but isn't an example for us to let us know, hey, he's wanting to destroy your soul, and if he can, he will, and he's a liar and the father of lies. He was appealing to the pride of life. Man, you do a great miracle, they'll say, ooh, check you out. Man. And I'm just going to tell you, we cannot give in to the pride of life. You know, this church is not Burger King. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders, don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us have it your way. You ain't getting it your way. 
It's not about you, honey. It's about God. It's about God's will. It's about, this is about Jesus Christ. Amen. His mercy and his grace put you in this church to give him glory, not to take it. Amen. Ain't no flesh going to glory in his presence. Amen. We obviously understand that Jesus Christ, though he was God, yet he was man. He had humanity. He had flesh. Amen. That flesh, amen, was subject to, to, to temptation. Hello? Amen. It got hungry. It did all the things that we do. Amen. And, and so uh, that flesh, that flesh, his humanity, to wit that, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. That humanity, that flesh had to be in submission to the will of the Spirit. Amen. He was a human. Amen. He had human desires just like you. Amen. The Bible said he was at all points tempted like we, except he didn't have sin. He overcame the flesh. He prayed in the garden. Not my will. That's not one person of a divine trinity talking to another person. That is the flesh crying out to the spirit, honey. Amen. That flesh, that humanity had to be in submission to his authority, the spirit. Amen. If you're going to make it living for God, Brother Garza, you did awesome. We got to get this flesh in submission to the Spirit, to the authority of the Spirit. Amen. The devil said, if I can distract him from his purpose, the devil wants to distract some of you from your purpose. I'm going to tell you, the devil has no conscience and the flesh has no sense. And he throws it out there. Honey, you got to look at it and say, not me. In no way, Jose. Amen. If he could have distracted him from his purpose, he could have stopped the sound of the trumpet. See, the devil don't want you talking to people about God. He doesn't want you winning souls. He doesn't want you worshiping the Lord. He doesn't want you praising God. Amen. He wants to silence your trumpet. Amen. He wants to silence, amen, your voice. But I'm going to tell you something. You need to tell him, get behind me, Satan. You're an offense to me. Amen. I'm submitted to God. I'm submitted to the will of God. I'm submitted to the authority of God. Amen. I'm not out here as a maverick doing my own thing. How many has been across the Golden Gate Bridge? Never been across that. It's a magnificent structure. Around the turn of the century, they San Francisco had grown to a, a massive uh, seaport, metropolis. Believe it or not, I wasn't there then, but they tell me. History tells me. And uh, they wanted and they desired to build a bridge to span that gap there. But technology and engineering up to that point in time, they, they said it was impossible. They said, they said it could not be done. Amen. But uh, there was an engineer named uh, Joseph Strauss. And Joseph Strauss, hey man, he put together... Uh, some things and they, they rejected it and later on, hey amen, they kept working on it and finally they approved uh, Mr. Strauss's design, amen, and today we have a magnificent bridge, amen, it was finished in 19. 37, amen, and that bridge has gone through earthquakes, that bridge has gone through storms, that bridge has gone through all kinds of, 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 of natural hazards and problems, and I'm going to tell you, amen, since 1937, that bridge has been standing strong, it's still there, amen, we're still using it, let me tell you something about the church, amen, they said it couldn't be done, amen, but I'm telling you, the church is still standing, the church is still strong, the church is 
still preaching the gospel. It's gone through the fire. It's gone through the flood. Amen. It's gone through trials and temptations. Amen. But thank God the church is still standing. We're here to build a church. We're here to see people saved. We're trying to get to the other side. One of the most amazing things during the construction of this bridge is Strauss insisted on the use of some of the most rigorous safety precautions in the history of man. I've worked a lot of construction sites, a lot of construction jobs. I've got several, several hard hats, safety glasses, and we have to have safety meetings at my... I have a, tile company. We've got to have safety meetings. Wear your safety equipment. Amen. Well, Mr. Strauss put into to practice many of these uh, safety standards. Amen. He, he uh, instituted a hat that later became known as the hard hat. Amen. And I, I've used a hard hat a few times. Amen. To help me. And he did other things. Amen. Non-glare goggles and, 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 and all kinds of things. But the most Conspicuous precaution that Mr. Strauss put was something beneath this bridge called the safety net. It was suspended under the bridge from end to end. And during construction, the net saved the lives of 19 men who fell from the bridge. These men later were dubbed the halfway to hell club. According to history. If it had not been for the safety net, they would have perished. If it had not been that, that somebody had a vision and said, we need to put something there. Because even in, these men were probably not being foolish. They're out there just doing their job. But even in everyday life, honey, hey man, somewhere you need some safety nets. Hey man, even just going through life. Hey man, you get dizzy, you fall. Hey man, you're working just doing your job. Things just happen. Hey man, and you need something to protect you. You need a safety net in your life. Well, it won't happen to me. You're the one. Yeah. Don't get so confident. Well, I think I can handle this myself. You're a fool. You're a fool. I need my safety net. I need the protection that God has put in my life. I'm just going to tell you, hey man, if it hadn't been for the safety net in my life, I would not be here today. Amen. We're living in a time when I, I'm just going to tell you, it's, it's a mess. This world's a mess. I don't talk to anybody that doesn't tell me that they have no confidence in the government. They have no confidence in the economy. They have no confidence in mankind. Amen. They see this place is on the way to hell. Amen. And it's going at a fast and furious uh, pace, amen, and we're living in this in this last day, and, and I'm just going to tell you, it's, it's ugly. Amen. I'm just going to tell you, this, this world's going to hell. Somebody said, well, what are we going to do about the world? Amen. We're not going to do anything about the world. We're going to save souls, but I'm just going to tell you, the system is going down, folks. The system is going down. Amen. We, we love not the world, but we do love the souls and the people. Amen. We're headed to another place. Amen. I'm not part. This world is not my home. Amen. I'm not going to fix it. It's headed for destruction. But I pick up my eyes and I look and I say, hey, I'm going somewhere. I'm getting out of here. Amen. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Amen. I can't fix the White House. I can't fix the Middle East. But I can save myself and I can save others. Yeah. Amen. But if the devil can do anything, he would like to, to blur a distinction between truth and error. Right and wrong. The Bible said this. that They're going to call Good, evil, evil, good. Yeah. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. God said. That's what's wrong with it. Yeah. Amen. And so we, we live in a, in a society where, where people don't want judgment. They don't want, they don't want anybody telling them they're wrong. Amen. Well, who are you to tell me? I had a man come in the church and he started in. He came in on the perfect night. 
uh, I, was, I was teaching uh, Elder what a difference a line can make, and, uh, and we were on beards and facial hair. And he had a big full beard and long hair. Uh, you know, but he showed up on the wrong night or the right night, I'm not sure which. I'm still going to teach it just because he was there. I wasn't being offensive, brother. I was just, that was my message for the night, and God just happened to bring him there. And so I got done, and uh, this was actually the second week I was teaching this, this study. And, uh, and I, so I made the statement. I said, well, if uh, you, know, you have any questions, probably the best thing to do would be the, to, to get the, the CD from last week, and then you can get the whole story because I'm not going to recap everything we taught last week. And so, uh, so we went into to Beard's facial hair, blah, blah, blah. And so after service, he comes to me. He says, you offended me. Well, he said, uh, started in, started telling me that about, about his, how I was offensive. He said, you said that, that my beard can be an offense and cause an offense and, and, and be, take away from the gospel and some things. He said, but I'm going to tell you, you're offending me. I said, well, and he said, furthermore, you didn't give us enough scripture. I said, were you not paying attention? And I said, number one, you, know, you didn't listen if you didn't hear any scripture. You're not paying attention. I said, number two, I also made a statement that you ought to buy the CD from last week. He said, buy? <laughs> he said, where does the Bible say to buy the truth? I said, well, it says buy the truth and sell it not. <laughs> Amen. So go buy the truth. <laughs> so he, 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 uh, I just have fun. The only reason I pastor is I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. And, uh, you know, I told our church the other day, this is getting off the subject, and please help me, Jesus. But I said, Elder, I don't need a television. I don't need soap operas. You pastor a church, you got more soap opera and drama. God, I don't need to watch as the world turns. Amen. Spend 10 minutes in the prayer room and then go in and counsel somebody. It's like, my God. I don't need to see that trash. Anyway, that was just a side note. But uh, so I was talking to this man and he said, he, he, he's, he's looking at me and he just, and he just, just gets in my face. And I'm like, I've told you, I'm like the chihuahua. <laughs> a little dog with a big attitude. And I just looked at him. He says, uh, he said, he said, I don't know who you think you are. The chihuahua is mad. I said, well, buddy, I don't know who you think you are, but I'll tell you who I am. I'm the pastor of this church, and you get out of here. He stopped on the way out. Somebody was talking to him. I said, don't bid him Godspeed. I just threw him out. Let him go. You know what? They ain't coming in the church and telling us how to preach it. They're not coming in the church. And, you know what? Thank God for a man of God that's a watchman on a wall. Thank God for a man of God that'll get up and sound the trumpet. Thank God for somebody that'll stand up and say, Hey, not in this church. Not on my watch. We need to know where the line is. We need to know where the truth is. People ought to leave your church services saying, hey, I understood that. Make it plain. Amen. Isaiah 59, 1, he said, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. Hey, God don't have no problems. Let me tell you, he can still save. He can still hear. Hey, man, God doesn't ever lose his power. But where is the power, the problem? He said, but your iniquities have separated you and your God and your sins from his face from you that he will not hear. The problem isn't with God. The problem's with us. He said, verse 8, the way of peace they have not known. There is no judgment in their goings. 
Don't tell me what to do. That is your safety net. Your safety net is a man of God that will tell you what to do. I said the safety net is the fact that a man of God will look at you and say, Hey, you're not doing that. You need to do this. This is where you need to go. This is how you need to live. Amen. We heard that preach. There ain't no preacher going to tell me. Where is that man? Where is any man that rebels against the God-given authority? Amen. We have a spirit in the world and it's crept into Pentecost. And that's, hey, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. We got people that go from church to church. They've had 12 pastors before they had you. And the 12 before told them something different. And by the time they get to you, they look at you and say, that's just your idea. Well, if you think that's my idea, then find you another place. Amen. If you're here under your pastor's authority, I don't care if you've been to a hundred churches, amen. You submit yourself to that man right there, amen. If you don't agree, I'll give you a little hint. Shut your mouth, amen, amen. Pray about it, amen. Get it in your heart, praise the Lord. But I'm telling you, amen, don't mess with the safety net. You'll fall off the bridge. You'll end up on the rocks. Your marriage will be gone. Your life will be destroyed. Amen. I don't want to get so messed up. The Bible said, and judgment is turned away backward and justice standeth far off. For truth is fallen in the streets and equity cannot hear. Amen. I want to hold up truth. Amen. I want a man of God that will tell me truth. Amen. And if he's got to bring judgment, so be it. I need judgment so I can be saved. I appreciate the man of God in my life. I really do. And I endeavor my best to do everything he tells me. Amen. Going through some things in life and talking to him. And he said something so simple. You know, sometimes we're so dumb. Maybe you're not dumb, but I'm dumb. And uh, you didn't have to agree, brother. Amen. <laughs> he pastors close to me. And, uh, and so I was just talking to him. He said, brother, he, said, he, he calls me Ronnie, and that's okay. He can call me anything he wants. And uh, he said, Ronnie, he said, I'm just going to tell you something. He said, I'm going to give you a He said, you know, this doesn't sound, he sounds so trite. And he said, but I'm just going to tell you the best advice I can give you. Take a day at a time. I said, okay. He said, he said, Ronnie, take it a day at a time. Because I mean, you know. So I told my wife, I said, honey, you know, the elder said, we need to take this a day at a time. And I'm telling you, that has helped me get to here. Right. Say, oh, that's so simple. When you apply it, it works. Thank God for a voice from the elders. Thank God for a man of God. Amen. We've heard it a million times. Amen. I've been pastoring for years. How simple is that? I don't care how simple it is. It was right for me and it worked and it's what I needed to hear. I don't think I'm smarter than my pastor. I don't think I'm smarter than the authority in my life. Amen. That was so juvenile. That was so elementary. But it's what I needed to hear. Sometimes we pass up the juvenile and the elementary and then we get ourselves in trouble. You need to back up and go back and do the first works over again. Amen. Come and want to know about the Antichrist and the beast and the false prophet. Amen. And you don't even have a prayer life. Amen. You're going to have to meet meet the beast and the false prophet if you don't get a prayer life. Amen. The psalmist said in Psalm 73, he said, you know what? He said, said, uh, my feet had almost slipped. 
He said they were almost gone. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Amen. He began to compare them. And he began to get his eye on the world. Amen. I've had people, people have left our church bad and bad spirits and, and bad hearts. Amen. And one man is probably a millionaire. I had a man talk to me and he said, he said, you know what? Hey, God's blessed him. I said, God hadn't blessed that man. That's a curse. He's got so much money, it's blinded him. He can't repent. I'm just going to tell you something, because somebody's driving a Lexus don't mean they're blessed of God. Amen. Money is not necessarily a blessing. Many times, money is a curse. Well, if they're so, sir, they're so bad with God, how come they got all the money? Amen. Let me tell you, some of the most immoral people in the world got money. I know a man who's working on with another subcontractor who builds cabinets. And this man is one of the richest men in Reading and, uh, and uh, very prosperous and also very arrogant, extremely. And this man, the cabinet maker, was telling me, he said, I, 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 I built the cabinets for his house. And I built a cabinet for his Buddha. Um, now, he's, he's, he's a Caucasian man. He's married to an Asian woman. And, and uh, I'm sure uh, she brought in her, her Asian uh, religion of Buddha. Amen. And so uh, he, he, he showed him this cabinet. He said, and he built it. He said, that's where I, where I keep my Buddha. And he said, let me tell you why I got a Buddha in my house. I said, why? He said, Buddha makes me rich. Buddha brings me money. I'm going to tell you something. There, boy, there are people that claim to be apostolic. Amen. You ain't no more apostolic than them Buddhists. Amen. You think oh, God ought to just provide you with riches and wealth and toys and gifts and goodies. Amen. That's not the spirit of God. Amen. Yeah, God takes care of your finances. Yeah, but I'm telling you, he never promised you wealth. He never promised you riches. Amen. Until you get to the other side. Amen. Sometimes our religion can be so foolish. Amen. And ridiculous. We can sit on apostolic pews. Amen. And not even know who we are. People get twisted in their thinking. They get out of sorts with the man of God. They get filled with rebellion. And you try to deal with them. And they won't be dealt with. And they sit there with their money and say, you can't touch me. You can keep your money. I've had them play the money game with me. There was a time when I was not rich. But I had everything I needed. I was doing good. One didn't really want for nothing if I wanted it. And I'm not talking about millions, but if I wanted something, I had enough money, I could go buy it. I long for the day. Amen, I long for the day. He said, you've been a base and you've bounded. And I found out it's a lot more fun when you're abounding. And so there was a time when I would look at somebody like that and say, you know what, get out of here. I don't need your stinking money. Well, now I need their money. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this. I ain't taking their money if I got a compromise. <laughs> You're still not buying me. You're still not, amen, pressuring me. I'm telling you, amen, you got to get to where, you know what? I love God more than I love money. I love God more than I love this world. I'll fight it out. I'll push through it. God will take care of me. The psalmist wrote and he said, I almost slipped. Amen. Thank God there's a safety net. Thank God there's something to catch you. Amen. You get wobbly. The Bible said he went to the sanctuary of the Lord. He heard the preaching. He heard the word of God. You go to church and your man of God gets up in the pulpit and he says, thus saith the word of the Lord. He's trying to save you. Church is where you go to get your head on straight. Don't you fight the preacher. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
One of the strangest stories in the Bible, and there's some strange stories, and there's some things I, for the life of me I don't understand. And this is one of them. The Bible says, no prophets looking at Ahab. And uh, Ahab was a sweetheart, and his wife was just a wonderful person. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely hussy she was. And, uh, and so Jehoshaphat, Ahab standing there. They go get this prophet and they get the, and all the prophets are prophesying good. Oh, you're going to push, push them down. You're going to push them back, push them back, way back. Hey, Amen. They're like the cheerleaders. And, uh, and oh, oh, it happens. Yeah, rah, rah, rah. Well, Joseph says, uh, is there a real preacher in the house? I'm glad people recognize a real preacher. I'm glad there are people that say, you know what? We don't want to hear their lies and their foolishness. Give us a man of God that will tell us the truth. Amen. Give us somebody that will speak the truth to us. Amen. And so, so the prophet comes along. Amen. And they stop him along the way. He said, hey, just tell him what he wants to hear and you'll be all right. And I believe uh, that old prophet looked up and said, hey, God's blessing. I believe he was doing it in a mocking manner. God will bless you, man. Just do what you want. Do your thing. You're the man anyway. And so he said, don't lie to me. The reason I don't like you is you never tell me nothing but good. Well, there ain't nothing good to say about you, Ahab. You're a rat. Eres una rata. And so, amen. Go learn what that means. And so, that old prophet looked at him. He said, I saw it in a vision. He began to tell about a vision in heaven. And he said, God asked the question, who shall I send to persuade Ahab? And the Bible said one said this, and one said that, and another one come along and said, I'll be a lion spirit in the mouth of his prophets. He said, go. And I'm just going to tell you, I think those prophets felt some kind of an anointing on them. They felt a spirit. It wasn't God. It was a lion spirit. It was a demon spirit. It was evil. Hey Amen. Well, I'm feeling something. Yeah, you are feeling something. But as soon as they opened their mouth, when it spoke out, it didn't agree with the word of God. Bible said, try the spirits, whether they be of God. Hey Amen. And they prophesied, hey Amen, nothing but good. I'm just going to tell you something. You don't try to find you a preacher that's a lying prophet that'll tell you what you want to hear. Don't you dare go looking for a preacher. Well, if you don't tell me what I want to hear, let me tell you what I'll do. I'll go over there. You'll be cursed of God and you'll be sent a lion spirit the problem is you won't submit to the authority if you'll submit to the authority and get the rebellion out of your heart you'll be alright amen amen praise God hallelujah Micah 2 he said, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And he goes on to say some things. But in verse 6, he says, Prophesy ye not, say they to them that prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them. They shall not take shame. Amen. And in verse 11, he says, If a man walking in spirit of falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and strong drink, even he shall be the prophet of this people. The Amplified of verse 6, it says, Do not preach. Say the prophesying false prophets. One should not babble and harp on such things. Disgrace will not overtake us. Preacher, all you're doing is harping on us. All you're doing, amen, is, 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 is on and on and on, amen. And so they don't want to hear the truth, amen. Verse 11, he said, if a man walk in the spirit of vanity and falsehood should lie and say, I will prophesy to you of wine and strong drink, O Israel, he would even be the acceptable prophet of this people. Why? Because they wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. I don't want to hear what I want to hear. I want to hear what God wants me to hear. 
Don't give me a false prophet. Don't give me somebody that'll tell me, hey man, if I'm a lady, I can dye my hair and trim my hair. I can wear my skirts wherever I want. Don't give me a, a man that'll let me grow my, my, my facial hair, hey amen, and wear short sleeves and do this and do that, hey amen. They believe in one God. As long as you believe in one God, what else matters? Well, they baptize in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I'm one God from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Everything about me is one God. I'm telling you, amen, I, I got a revelation of one God. And I've got a revelation of Jesus' name, baptism. Amen, but I also got a revelation of a whole, whole lot of other things in this book. Amen. And I'll tell you how I got it. Amen, I sat under that man right there. And he'll stand week after week and tell me what I needed to do to be saved. Amen, and I listened to it and I put it in my heart. Amen. Thank God, thank God, thank God for preachers that will tell us the truth. Amen. Don't, don't lie to me. Amen. Don't tell me half of it. Tell me the whole truth. If you're in a church, amen, where your man of God is preaching holiness, amen, you ought to shout with him. You ought to worship with him. You ought to praise God with him. Amen. The greatest voice and the greatest safety that you got in your life is that you listen to the elders in your life. The spirit of truth will only come through submission to apostolic authority. And I'm going to tell you, this works for preachers as well as it does saints. Matter of fact, it works for preachers better than it does saints. When a preacher gets away from his apostolic authority, let me tell you, he's fixing to fall. And when he falls, he's, he's taken down his safety net. I need somebody to tell me. I need this man right here to tell me. Amen. And he has. He's called me. And he said, Brother Green, I want to tell you something. Good understanding makes longtime friends. You remember that phone call? Yeah. yeah. He said, I want to talk to you about something. He, he straightened something out. I thank you, Elder. Amen. I need to be straightened out. Amen. Elder Booker has straightened me out. Amen. He's hurt my feelings. He did. Hurt my feelings. Pobrecito, mijo. I needed my feelings hurt. Amen. I thank God for Don Heiler Jr. He's my elder. Brother Heiler and I are the same age. Now I know he looks like my son. And I'm, I, I, I don't like that part. But, and I shouldn't have told him that we're the same age. I just, I'm sorry. But I take counsel from this man. But he's your age. He is your equal. He is not my equal. He's my elder. It doesn't matter how old the man is. He has been put in authority in my life. Well, Brother Green, you know as much as Brother Hyler. I don't think I do first place. Number two, if I do, it doesn't matter. He's still my authority. I'm telling you, man of God, you better find some authority in your life. You better get somebody that you can trust that'll tell you, hey, you're messing up. You better straighten up, get it right in your life. That's a safety net. I've seen preachers fall because they wouldn't listen to their God-given authority. How in the world do men who have preached truth for so many years... And saints who have lived for God faithfully for so many years get from truth to error. We heard about some of that the other night, preterism and divine flesh and some of this other stuff. And when you talk to these folks, you're like, huh? What? Are you goofy? No, I'm Donald. But... How do you get from here to there? How does a man or a woman or, or a preacher that's loved this truth for so long get twisted? 
What, what goes awry? I used to think that word was awry, but I, I found out I was awry, so I fixed it. Amen. I'm, I'm sorry, my daddy was from Oklahoma, and we had all kinds of words. Amen. But, uh, but I had to, I'm trying to be cultured. Amen. But it's not working. I know, Brother Martin, it's not working. But uh, what happens to a man's spirit that, that error takes over? Well, they got to remove the safety net because that'll keep you from falling. But somewhere they get confident. Somewhere they get arrogant. Jesus cast yourself down from the pinnacle of the temple. He was dealing with the pride of, of his humanity. And he says, you know what? You'll be all right. Hey, that's a lie from the devil. You will not be all right without the God-given authority in your life. I don't care who you think you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how long you've been around. I'm telling you, everybody needs authority in their life. Amen. Obey them which have the rule over you and submit. Why? For they watch for your soul. God has put a man on the wall. He's a soul watcher. First John chapter number four. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Appreciate what the Davis preaching about the frogs, the spirits, God. I'm telling you, we're fighting a spiritual battle. We are fighting a spiritual battle, folks. Hey, man, that's why you got to pray and get in the spirit. Hey, man, because you can't fight a spiritual battle with carnal weapons. Believe not every spirit, but do what? Try the spirits, whether they are of God. We need to check some spirits out. I've heard the men of God in my life said, you know what? I didn't like that guy's spirit. What does that mean? That means that elder looked at that man and God talked to him. And he checked out that spirit and said, there's something ain't right with that. Why do we got to try the spirits? Because many false prophets are gone into the world. Hereby, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Amen. He's of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Wherever you have heard that it should come. Even now, he's already in the world. Hey, let me tell you something. I'm not wondering when the Antichrist is coming. He's been around since the days of Paul. He said there are many Antichrists. They're already here. They're already working. Amen. But he says this. Ye are of God, little children. Ooh. And he said, you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. I'm going to tell you, folks that really get a love for truth, they don't listen to that. It's just something they look and say, Pastor, just something wasn't right. Yeah. They may not even know how to explain it. They may not have a doctrine. They may not have the theology. They may not have, amen, uh, you know, enough Bible background to understand it, but they got enough Holy Ghost and enough honesty with God, and they're submitted to the authority that they just said, you know what, Pastor, we went there, and it just didn't feel right. Hey, amen. Nay, hey, that's a honest heart saying I'm going to protect you I'm going to help you amen you of God greater is he that's in you but he said they they you know who they are they're the the other guys you know who they are you know them they're the opposite of us there's us and them there's they and, and we. We ain't them and they ain't us. You see, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For had they been of us, they would have continued with us. But it was done that it may, might be manifest. They were not of us, honey. Amen. If you love this truth, you'll hang around. You'll believe it. Amen. You can't hang around this very long. Amen. Until something happens in your life. Amen. You love this truth. You will live this truth. Amen. You will, you will die for this truth. They are of the 
the world. Therefore, speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. Who's he talking about? He's talking about false prophets. You get people with a worldly spirit in your church, they'll find them one of them. You get people with carnal spirits in your church, they won't submit to the man of God. Hey man, they'll look at you and say, I'll just go find me, play, me somebody else. Yeah. Huh, Brother Morton? Yeah. That don't happen in Northern California, does it? No, no. We, <laughs> hey man. Well, I, you know what? If I, if I, don't like, I don't like what you're doing. I'll go find somebody that'll tell me what I want to hear. But let me give you a little advice. See this man right here? These men here? These preachers here? I'm going to be bold and going to be arrogant. And, and, and you're going to say, you know what? Who do you think you are? But the Bible said, we are of God. The apostolic ministry is ordained of God. God put in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to a perfect man. God put men of God in the church to help you. We are of God. And how can you tell where somebody's at? He that knoweth God heareth us. Well, who do you think you are? It's not who I am. God has put the apostolic authority in the church. Well, I don't like that. See ya. You ain't gonna make it. But I know one thing. There's some people here that do like it. Yes, Woo! I pastor. Hey, there's some folks right here from Anderson. They love it. We gone through hell. They stayed with me. Why? They love this apostolic truth. Hey, man, they're not going to fall for their lies. My sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. He that knoweth God heareth us. And he that is not of God heareth not us. You say you're a person, you're a saint of God. If you are not listening to the apostolic authority in your life, you are not of God. You're a rebel. You're going to end up falling off of the bridge and crashing. Why? Because you took the safety net out of your life. Amen. Hereby know we the spirit of truth. We're not just talking about truth and error. There's a spirit that's already been preached about. You get off in a spiritual thing and all of a sudden they're so dizzy and fuzzy and messed up. You're looking at them saying, what happened to you? I'll tell you what happened. A spirit got a hold of them. Jesus, Jesus looked at Judas at the Last Supper. And he said, one of you is going to betray me. And he goes on. He dips the sop. And Jesus took his hand off of Judas. And the Bible said before that, he said, Have not I chosen you, but one of you is a devil. But the devil had not possessed Judas until that point in time. The Bible says, and then the devil entered into him. He said, what thou doest, do quickly. And he went out and went insane and ended up killing himself. Why? I'm just going to tell you something. I have seen this here of late. Amen. People rebel and rebel and rebel and rebel against authority. Amen. And I'll tell you what I do. I get in a prayer room and I pray for their soul. And I say, God, save them. I don't want them to be lost. But they fight. And one day, God pulls a burden out of my heart. And I walk into a prayer room. I've done it. 
was the people I loved dearly. And I walk up to the altar and say, God, I'm done with this person. They don't want me pastoring them. I can't help them. And I do in prayer. I do this. Maybe you don't. I'm just goofy, but that's okay. But I lift my hands and I walk away and I say, God, I don't have a burden for that person any more. And without fail, I've seen them spin out. I've seen them do insane things. Right. Who do you think you are? I'm nobody, but it's God's plan. Yes. God has designed safety. He loves his people. And he's given you a man of God. The Bible said, I'll give you pastors according to my heart. Don't fight your authority. Don't fuss with the man of God in your life. Elder Booker, I love you. You're my authority, Pastor. Whatever you want to tell me, please, I want to submit to it. Elder Morton, talk to me. Brother Hyler, Elder Wheeler, other men of God. But I can't give up my safety net. I can't give up my safety net. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not going to date that girl. You're not going to wear those clothes. You're not going to go do that. You're not going to go there. You're not going to act like that. You need to cut your hair. You need to fix that. You need to do this. Amen. You need to take that off. Amen. Who do you think you are? I'm your safety net. That's who I am. I'm the man of God that's trying to keep you saved. A sheep is a defenseless animal. It has absolutely no defense mechanism in its life. None. And if a predator comes to destroy the sheep, and if there is no shepherd, that sheep has no hope. The only defense the sheep has, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And all that I've been through in the last two or three years. I'm going to tell you what keeps me sane. And it's not easy. But I'll talk to the elders in my life. Say, Elder, am I still okay? Yeah, Ronnie, you're doing all right. Are you sure? Yes. Just keep doing what you're doing. But I don't understand it. Just doing what you're doing okay I got a voice from my elder I can make it another day and I don't talk to him every day but every once in a while I gotta hear the voice of the man of God in my life because I get to thinking goofy I get to making my own plans and ideas well I'll just do this or I'll just do that it's not the will of God. And I have the men of God stop me and say, Ronnie, you're not going to do that. Okay. You're going to stay. You're going to preach. You're going to... Okay. Won't you lift your hands? Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't we all just gather to the front and just begin to say, God, I can't be saved without a pastor. I can't be saved without a preacher. I can't be saved without an elder. 
and pray for the man of God in your life. Pray for that safety net, that security. Even if I don't like what the man of God says, he's the man of God in my life. Somewhere, maybe during this meeting, you need to just go to the man of God. If your pastor is here and hug his neck, if preachers, if your elder is here and hug their neck and say, thank you, elder. Thank you for being the authority. Thank you for keeping me safe. I'm going to tell you, this is what will keep you in the church. This is what will keep you saved. This is what will keep you prayed through. This is what will keep you walking right. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I didn't bring anything new. Amen. But it's something that we all need to hear. Praise God. Praise God.